women's program in science has been an interest of mine for quite a while. It's born out of the idea that there aren't a lot of women in science and that we need to increase the number of women. And part of that is engaging them, keeping them interested in science, seeing you know, that if you do like science, this is a, a career that you can do as a woman. And so it's at least a year-long program. And what we expect by the end of their senior year is that they'll have come back and put together a nice presentation when we do the annual research scholarship day at Lehman College, that they will come back and participate that and show off what they've done to the college community here and what they were able to accomplish. The six girls that we have, um, five of which you met today, uh, were hand selected by Dr. Jones for the program. So these girls intended College Now courses, so they did our freshman biology majors course this summer and they're also doing extra research activities. So the girls are pretty varied in what they want to do uh, as far as their research topics, uh, but they're all very focused on doing something that is helpful to humanity. My name is Adekira Liberato and I go to the Wood Clinton High School. Um, I was born here, but I was raised in the, in the Dominican Republic so I was eight years old and I started school here in the United States at, I mean, in fourth grade. I've always been very interested in human behavior and I feel like psychology will give me a better look of why people act the way they do. So that's been my main focus, I guess, since I decided what I wanted to be. Women don't enter science, regardless of whether it's a minority or non-minority. I think it's, it's not the obvious career choice unless they're going into medical school. Uh, but I think with minority women, there's that extra hurdle that they, they may come from being first generation if they're going off to college. There's always the pressure, I think, with any child going off to college to have a career, right? That the job you're going to do is going to lend to a career. And I think for science, it's hard for people to see what that career is, and especially with women. And with women, there's always that feeling, well, if I want to have children, can I do that and do the career? How hard is it to get tenure? Do I have to go into academics? And so having a program like this allows them to see what all the options are for women in science. I feel like the program is very helpful because it's not only given us the opportunity to work in the science field and get to experience it, but it also allows us to experience the whole college classes and stuff. What I'd like at the end of them is to really be excited about the research project they're going to do. That's really what I want for them. I want them to have fun. I want them to enjoy themselves and not get down on themselves with the classwork. So, you know, so that's, they were all very nervous about taking the class and having the chair of the biology department and the director of their program teaching them. But I think they've kind of eased into it. We all have lunch together and we sit around, we talk, and I bring in other women to come in and talk to them. So it's been, they're kind of relaxing now into the program and really getting excited about starting to do some research. My research is about perception and it's basically trying to find a correlation between brain activity as people age and perception control. She is a very, very shy student, but she's very, very smart, very fun, very, very motivated. Uh, what she's looking at was she was interested in how when someone views a crime scene or someone views some event that happens out in the world, what is going to affect our perception. And she did a little bit of background research on it and she found that age is one of the big factors that changes how we perceive something that we see. So she's looking into the neurochemical and structural events that might happen in our brain as we age that might influence that. There have been many studies about it, but nobody has actually found what is it in the brain that changes. So that's my main focus. I'm trying to see what changes as people age in the brain in order to find the correlation between age and perception. Kimberly, she has parents who are educators. 
right? So I think that she was very interested in that area of education and IQ. I want to study IQ. I guess that was an interest of mine and I want to study how envir the environment comes into play with IQ. Many people believe that IQ is based on genetics, others say that it's based on the environment, the school system, and I want to kind of clear that up a bit. Shanice. So Shanice, it's funny, she at first started to look at Alzheimer's disease uh, and she was looking at diabetes because she uh, knows some friends and some family members, older family members who had been affected by these diseases. One day we took a trip to the greenhouse. We met with our, um, our instructor who manages our greenhouse and he showed her all of these different species of plants and what they do, some medicinal purposes, uh, manufacturing purposes, and it really got her interested in plant sciences. My project is the effect of magnetism on the growth of radish plants. So now she's looking and at how we can use magnets to help plants grow more effectively. I decided to try that because I actually a few days before that, I went to, when we were doing our lab tours, I went to um, a plant lab, and it was really interesting, and I said, oh, maybe I could do something with plants, and I decided that um, maybe if you can use magnetism rather than fertilizer that is kind of harmful, you could use a more healthier alternative, so I thought that maybe if I can try a different method, then maybe that can make a difference. Keiko is a very um, interesting student. She, she's just very sweet and she just came from Peru a few years ago and she's really interested in engineering. She's done uh, the STEP program for the last few summers in field of engineering and she's interested in nanotechnology, how we can use little particles and capsules and little robotic objects to help treat diseases. My interest is engineering and biology. And uh, because of that, um, I was looking for something that could combine both of them. Um, right now I'm doing a project about nanotechnology I, and how we can use it to help inflammatory breast cancer. So she's looking at inflammatory breast cancer, which is a very, um, very rare and very, very virulent form of breast cancer. And we don't have a lot of uh, really good ways to treat it. Mean survival is less than five years. So she's looking to see if nanotechnology can help in the treatment of this particular type of breast cancer. Uh, Leslie came in, she was shy, she was a little bit unsure about what she wanted to do, but she was interested in stem cell research. I want to know if there's a possibility that certain diseases could be cured and if the li with science, with the lifestyle of people, would it be able to improve? And she read an article, I believe it was about stem cells um, of a fetus helping a mother who had um, a heart attack, so had damage to her heart. And those stem cells traveling from the fetus to the mother to repair the heart. And she was very interested in how can I apply this to something else? What else do I think this could fix? Um, and is pregnancy actually a good treatment for these certain types of ailments? So at first she looked at cancer. There wasn't a lot of research backing that. So then she started to look at traumatic brain injury. And if we could get some neurogenesis from the stem cells from the fetus. So I think it's really interesting and it's something that is up and coming in the field. We really want to look more into how we can use stem cell therapy. So hers is great. It's a very great study. 